Black people used to be the face of the Muslim community in the 1960s. So why in a supposedly less racist time are they no longer the face of the community? Is it because of racism within the Muslim community? Assalamu alaikum, Ummah Nation. Welcome to the Ummah Channel. Today we're going to be talking about racism in the Muslim community. Let's begin with history. So the history of Islam in Black America goes all the way back to slavery. We had up to 30% of enslaved Africans being Muslim. People like Umar ibn Said, Prince Abdurrahman, and Yara Marmout. We had in the earlier 20th century prominent Black American Muslim converts, people like Sheikh Dawood Faisal and Professor Muhammad Ezel Dean. In the 1960s, we had prominent, prominent leaders in the nation of Islam, like Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X. Islam in Black America has long been intertwined with notions of struggle. Enslaved African Muslims struggle for freedom from slavery, and free Black Muslims struggle for freedom from racism. Their fight led to the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and the Heart Seller Act of 1965. The Heart Seller Act of 1965 allowed for immigrants from Africa, the Middle East, and South Asia to come to the United States in search of better opportunities. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 not only safeguarded better laws for minorities, but it ultimately made the lives of Muslim immigrants better. To paraphrase famed novelist Toni Morrison, the second thing that every immigrant learns when they come into this country is the N-word. Every immigrant is faced with a choice. Do they side with the dominant white community or do they side with the black community? So immigrants coming from Muslim countries were bringing pre-existing hierarchies and biases which melded with American racism. In the post-civil rights era, black people became more visible. In pop culture, blackness became seen as cool but treated as a commodity and non-black Muslim communities weren't immune to this. 9-11 was a watershed moment in U.S. history. With the events of September 11th, the media image of the Muslim shifted from black to brown. Due to the negative media stereotype, some immigrant Muslim communities made it their mission to prove their Americanness and their innocence. One way they did this was drawing from the legacy of black Muslim contributions to this country. All too often, black people are used as a prop and a decoration piece within the Muslim community. Black Muslim voices are used solely for convenience. If they become inconvenient, the Muslim community disappears. Black Muslim identity is continuously called into question. Compared to their peers, black shiuk have to prove their religious authenticity much more. The presence of black youth at the masjid is seen as undesirable. There are stories of masjids being afraid to put up basketball hoops with the fear that there be an influx of black teens. Many youth are raised to see black people as friends, but not as legitimate prospects for marriage. Black culture comes under scrutiny, not because of thick, but because of a stereotypical view of what a Muslim looks like. The stories of black people like Malcolm X aren't used as sources for internal reflection. Rather, they're used as tools for da'wah and weapons against white supremacists. Malcolm X prioritized all aspects of his deen, he not only focused on Salah, he also focused on social justice. He not only emphasized political involvement, he also emphasized spiritual growth. Similarly, the Muslim community should not only emphasize ritual practice, but also anti-racist action. What are things that you can do to take a stand? Read the autobiography of Malcolm X or some of his speeches like Message to the Grassroots. Support Muslim organizations like the Muslim Anti-Racist Coalition and the Muslim Alliance of North America. It's important for us to study the history of the black Muslims who paved the way for all of us. Robert Dannon's Black Pilgrimage to Islam is a great place to start. February 14, 1965, Malcolm X's house was firebombed. This did not discourage him from giving a speech a few days later at the Audubon Ballroom where he was assassinated. Malcolm X is willing to sacrifice his life for social justice. What are you willing to sacrifice? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْطِ شُهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ إن يكن غنيا أو فقيرا فالله أولى بهما فلا تتبعوا الهوى أن تعدلوا 
وَإِن تَلْوُوا أَوْ تُعْرِضُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا